here doing a planet tour of uh, a couple different planets in Jedi Fallen Order, and this is Vagana. Hey, BD-1. I'm Cal. Here on Pagano, I've mostly been working on um, scripting through like a lot of the um, moments between Cal and BD-1 to uh, showcase the relationship and, and, and show how they get to know each other a little bit. Hold on. Y you know the Jedi? Everything we're doing with, um, with BD-1 and Cal's relationship here um, isn't just about writing the script for it. It's about like how we represent it in the world. Part of that comes in through our cinematics, but we try to like think about it, um, you know, from an in-game perspective instead of just like looking at it on a piece of paper. Gameplay first is like a respawn sort of philosophy and narrative centers especially, um, that's really important for us. So we have, you know, like scans and echoes as like ways of telling small stories that are tied into reward mechanisms and gameplay and exploration. Um, and that's, you know, a way of trying to find a balance between how we're telling a story and what your gameplay experience is as well. Bagana's designed as like a measuring stick for the player. It's their first planet that they can retraverse. That's one of the challenges of Bagano is once the player has unlocked all their abilities, they can um, double jump over everything and wall climb and zip line all over the place. And so I think it was important throughout our game to keep it close to design, but even more so in Bagano since there's so much double jumping to different islands. After each ability you get, you can kind of come back to Vagano and, and it unlocks a little different section of it depending on which abilities you've gotten on the other planets. So you can always kind of come back and explore it with your new abilities in mind. So you're kind of teaching the player that it's not just main path in this game. It's, there's, there's different side areas to explore. It's either use your force powers to kind of solve a little puzzle. Um, Cordova's extremely dangerous workshop. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. he was a full-fledged Jedi. And there's so, life like, on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a moment that, that's kind of an important Metroidvania moment here where you, you, we slam you right into um, essentially a gate. This is essentially a gate because you don't have the ability to cross it yet. You can tell that the main path goes that way. It, it, we lead you right there. That, that's your goal, the vault. Um, and we frame it, you know, between these, these rocks here. But the player has no way to cross this gap yet. So now the player just needs to kind of explore the level to figure out how to cross that, bridge that gap. In Bagano, in our initial concept, we kind of had these onioning shapes of rock and striations of kind of like red clay because the wall runs that we're about to introduce the player to, the kind of the language along the wall runs is we try to do smaller striations on where you can wall run. So right off the bat, with your new wall run ability, we've got kind of different secrets and things to explore and find. But we try to funnel you back to this moment where now you can cross the gap that you blocked you before. Players have had a hard time finding that. And it's just something that when you model it, when, you, when Jeff designs it, you're like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The player will use that wall run to get back. But you watch players just get walk lost right and walk right by it. So it's stuff you don't think about first pass, and then you watch a few play tests, and you start to realize that we need to do more to help the player. All right, so here we've got the option uh, at this point in the game to choose uh, to go to either Zepho or Dathmar. Here uh, you see we've centered it, centered it in Lugano, and we've got these kind of two options. Uh, where the player can freely choose to go either to Zepho and kind of continue the main path or or deviate a little bit and go to death there. And the, the UI team, you can even see like the what went into this, like they're almost equal choices, but Zepho is slightly closer to the cursor. Like this is intentional, like this sort of thing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of thought that goes into this. It's a literal fork in the road. Literal fork in the road, exactly. Yeah. So which do you guys want to choose? Let's uh, let's go to Dathomir. I agree. Okay, <laughs> let's go to Dathomir. We're doing a planet tour of Dathomir today. Uh, gonna look at the art, game design, and the narrative all together. Dathomir's a special place because it is one of the planets that pre-existed, so we had um, a really kind of fun relationship with Lucasfilm for this one because we, there was like a lot of back and forth and a lot of cool ideas kind of thrown around. We have... Uh, three tombs throughout the game. Uh, the tomb that you find here is the tomb of Kujet, who really kind of consolidated power, um, became just um, tyrannical, um, murdered those that they disagreed with, 
And so it's a really kind of dark time for the Zepho um, in general. And you see that kind of theme play out here in uh, the fact that the art for the Zepho even starts to look a little bit more um, imperial here almost. So when I initially blocked this out, I kind of had a general idea of what things we wanted the player to be able to obtain, but the architecture and stuff, at that time, we didn't have a lot of concepts. So luckily, Jean came aboard, and he was able to conceptualize this area, actually all the spaces, in, in 3D based on my block out. And so his concepts actually inspired me to change some of my layout, just because it felt, it felt more believable. It felt like a place when I saw his concept. This whole right side didn't look anything like this. It wasn't until Jean did a 3D concept where he had this very tiered kind of look, and I was like, oh, that looks really cool for gameplay and visually more interesting. And Jean kind of talked about how he came up with that. One of my main inspirations was uh, Petra, like in Jordan. They built an entire civilization in they, this kind of remote part of the desert. It's an abandoned place, but people are living here, and they're repurposing it completely differently. That's the Knight Brothers. And so you have this kind of like layering in the in environment, you know, uh, storytelling that I thought was kind of, you know, it's kind of interesting to try to communicate to the player. Dathomir was a matriarchy. Um, so the Knight Brothers were ruled over by the Knight Sisters, who were, of course, um, <laughs> slaughtered. There was a genocide committed against them, basically, by um, General Grievous uh, during the Clone Wars. We played around with a number of Knight Brothers, and we actually had to work with the cinematic team, because I think in cinematic, they had like four or five of them pop out, and we realized that these guys are pretty hard. So we managed to get down to two. Um, these guys are really agile. They roll around, um, and they're pretty quick. So we wanted to make this space feel good for them, for the first fight, at least. In some of the other areas in Dathomir, it gets a little bit more narrow, but definitely in this first encounter with them, you have a lot of room to kind of move around and fight with them, and so that was the intent. John, you even made, like, some paintings or hieroglyphs at the bat. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, elite. there's a whole oh, Night Brother nice. mural walls, language like... of, like, their relationship with the spiders and the bat and the Zephunians. That's pretty slick. What's what's that one, John? It looks like. Uh, that's actually there's a the whole story. language. Christmas trees. I, I actually developed like a whole language of like what those signs mean. Okay. And uh, and yeah, that's supposed to be you know don't cross. Uh, don't cross. This, like, don't don't cross, cross this okay. uh, this place. Oh, this yeah, this like this, this is a night. This is basically night brother territory. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, if you look up, actually, there's like some of those uh, statues. That's a good example of like night brothers. U using whatever parts, uh, scavenging whatever parts of uh, things they can find on the planet, even like some Zepho statue parts, and making their own art with it. Uh, that's how they survive. When you come into this cave, it's probably the biggest drop-off you do in the game to really make it feel like you're dropping down into somewhere very deep. And it's kind of a one-way, too. Like, at a certain point, you can't get back out. I think it changes the mood too. I was like, okay, something's probably gonna happen here. So this is basically what I've been doing the last quite a few months, basically since I got here, is doing this bat boss. He's been quite the challenge. He's one of the unique characters in the game, so he actually responds to different body part hits. It's like, I think he's the only guy in the game that currently does that. These markers are meant to kind of show his uh, his, his weak spots, is the, is the kind of hope. Kind of seeing for play test, it looked like he needed a little bit more indication as to that. He's like a glass cannon, right? Like, you get hurt pretty bad if you get hit, but I've given the player a lot of tools to be able to kind of get back into the fight with the bat. The environment art's not finished, basically to convey, like, more the just relationship between the bat and the Knight Brothers. Like, they're afraid of uh, the bat, but they also kind of, like, like, worship it or, like, respect it. Yeah, it's, he's like the alpha of the planet, I yeah, guess, right? Yeah, kind of. And has that creature of the Black Lagoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his face is pretty gnarly. Now he has eyes, I feel guilty, like, stabbing him and stuff. And I'm like, oh, man. Like, I was fine when it was just, like, a box. I know, now. And now I'm like, now oh, dude, bad. we're yeah. bros, though. We've been through so much together, but I have to defeat you. So we're finishing up production on the game right now. We're gonna be playing through some of Zepho today. I'm one of the level designers that's been working on this level. We're like not too far out from locking the game so that basically all hands are off except bug fixing. 
So all the last design work and especially all the last art is getting in right now. Oh yeah. What are these? I think they're called skunkuses. I love these things. They're called poppers, at least internally. Mm -hmm. And they're just little guys that if you walk into them, they'll, oh my God, I'm gonna have to be very careful. I'm not walking into any more of them. I don't have enough health for that. But the skunkuses are little environmental obstacles that the player needs to avoid walking into, which can make uh, normal platforming challenges more interesting. Um, for example, right here, just having to walk around and jump through an area that otherwise would be pretty simple for the player to navigate, but requires them to use a little more thought to make sure that they don't actually get damaged. Um, and here, going down this slide, having to make sure to avoid them while sliding down. When we get the level from level artists, we generally already have some placeholders for where the enemy gonna be. But the ones on the slide and the ones on the jump, they've been there for so long. A couple weeks ago, the art finally went in for the actual Skunga, so it's nice to finally see them after yeah. three, three years. The old design version of them was just like a little spear with two little, like, Eyes. two eyeballs. They were just white and black, big yeah. eyeballs. They were hilarious. A lot of the rooms have like the wind blown patterns all over the walls, just to kind of show the wind that has been happening in here for who knows how long. But this helps like tie all the architecture together and give like a unique look. Shows like it's a really small area with not very long gameplay, but for game development, it's actually take years and many revisions to get to here. I think we probably have to uh, tune down the lighting a little, a little bit more. And I think the floating illuminations will probably. Oh yeah, we also have oh, an asset for Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> this is on my on my list. <laughs> I'm gonna make it within a week. My specific work here more entails collectibles like scans and echoes. The echoes are a little bit more mysterious, so we're trying to make them have more of an emotional impact. I'm getting a strange feeling from this one. Ancient Zepho gathered here. I wonder why. So now we're kind of happening upon the, the other side of this mountain, and then we're, we're kind of revealing this crashed Venator, which is a ship that you can see, you will have seen from the landing pad. And it's kind of, it's kind of one of those like, gaming cliches that like, if you can see it, you can actually go there. But in this case, you can get up close. Um, if you're an exploring player, you can, um, you can actually go in later. Well, it's one of my favorite parts of Zepho, just this fight arena around it, the open space. The Martin design it seems really, really cool. So we've got a small ecology system, and so you'll see as you kind of play through the game, you'll have like multi-faction fights. All these creatures have relationships to one another, so that Skaz is like a, a prey of this brute, uh, but then you're the bigger threat, so he's going after after you right now. Okay, so now Cal is heading towards uh, Kashyyyk. He's kind of got this hint about this uh, Wookiee named Tafel, and that's kind of the next uh, breadcrumb on his journey. Today we're going to be looking at Kashyyyk. We're going to be looking at this uh, second half of this level, seeing the, the jungle and the kind of beginnings of the origin tree and the Shadowlands. And it was exciting developing it and excited to show you guys. So this was actually a good opportunity for us to show this juxtaposition again of this kind of built imperial environment with its refinery and the more natural landscape of Kashyyyk that they're just dicing up with all their cutters and exploiting for all its resources. Especially here, coming out onto the vista, really establishes that contrast. Seeing how kind of organic shapes come in contact with the straight and harsh architecture of the Imperial Refinery. They're kind of struggling to push back against all this fauna, and you know, they've disturbed the balance of this place. The origin tree is a unique foundation for Kashyyyk you haven't seen it before. Because you're used to seeing the more beach areas, all this stuff. This is kind of a different side of the planet where the origin trees the rain supreme, its roots stretch across the entire uh, vista, and you feel its impact everywhere. So it's definitely a landmark. You, you know where to go to. And I think especially selling this idea of this kind of, this source kind of uh, mother tree and all these roots extending into this jungle, showing how that's being severed. If you follow the root system, you'll see how it comes right into contact and is being destroyed by the empire there. This is the entrance to the Shadowlands, so it's a little bit intimidating, but I mean, you're a Jedi, so nothing really uh, stands in your way. Right. 
This is uh, the first area that you go through. It's uh, like the interior of one of the roots. Yeah, it was definitely challenging trying to figure out, like, what does an inside of a tree look like? Mainly looked and referenced, uh, like, sandstone cliffs. A little bit of uh, kind of the inside of bones, too. Yeah. Hang on! The Night Sister has been hunting the player throughout Shadowlands. And as you reach the top of the Shadowlands roots, she chases the player down back to the front of the origin tree. So basically, you're sliding down sort of a mud canal through these Shadowlands roots with the uh, Ty Reaper coming after you. I'll never forget when you first debuted this section of us blocks. <laughs> a little bit terrified, but... I was um, scared. Yeah, I... We were scared, yeah. It's a lot of environment that you're traversing through totally. very quickly, but it's a fun puzzle to solve, and sometimes it can be a really exciting result, something that we weren't expecting either. I know it was scary to you guys, but you guys knocked it out of the park. Since we just got double jump, I wanted to have sort of a really fun wall run chain sequence. It's funny, the art that Ryan made for the wall run, he called it the Septepal wall run art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a model name. It has to be one of our longest wall runs in our game, huh? Uh, yeah, so, probably. Yeah. yeah. We'll make that claim right here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> double jump makes it a little bit more uh, forgiving, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because previously we learned double jump right here. Uh, right. And then oh, we, yeah. Did, yeah, we decided to bring it down sooner, so now you have the experience of double jumping all over this tree, mm -hmm. which I thought was a really good idea. Uh, Great on Bloss's yeah. part. There's a back and forth with the player and, an, and a boss um, that you're trying to capture, like a one on one fight. Because a normal AI, their, their behavior is quite simplistic, um, they've only got a few mechanics that you need to learn. Um, but with boss, you, you, can't, you can't have that over a long fight. So with bosses, they have to evolve and, and change as the fight progresses to give the players more things to learn and more things to try to fight against. They need to have an answer for everything that the player can do, whereas many standard AIs just have a simple, I'm just going to go on the offense with what I know, rather than I'm going to respond to what the player is doing to me. So when making bosses, um, she has this whole array of combat moves and I need to make sure that there's the small openings that the player can take advantage of. Um, it's not too big or too small, um, but just enough just to test the player. <laughs> down in Inquisitor. This was the tour of Kashyyyk. There's more planets to explore, and I hope you continue our adventure in uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order.